Hey everybody, I wanted to bring you up to date with what's happening with North America at Scrabble and uh, their policy shift towards removing slurs from their NASPA word list, the NWL. This doesn't affect the rest of the world. The rest of the world plays to CSW, which is Colin Scrabble Word. So it is two different things. Not, what's happening here isn't going to affect the rest of the world. It's just about North America. Okay, so this is the North American Scrabble Players Association, NASPA. And the CEO, John Chu, wrote this long message to the members and also publicly posted it on the NESPA group, which anybody can view and on anybody can be a member. You don't have to be a NESPA member to view it or be in, be in the group. So it makes reference to anti-black racism, Black Lives Matter and so on. And uh, the main point of this post was to, to bring about uh, the kind of discussion about removing slurs. So the main, main kind of argument being made here is in highlighted here. So again, this is from John Chu. I have felt for a long time that there are some words in our lexicon that we hang on to in the mistaken belief that our spelling them with tiles on a board strips them of their power to cause harm. I think specifically of those words which are used primarily as slurs. Those words that have been used to label someone as being of less value than the speaker based on some innate traits such as gender, race or sexual orientation. Not words that are used to cause offence on scatological, prurient, profane, or the ground. So he's referring to slurs, which you can see on the right. That's a list of slurs that would be removed. And not about just general swear words and words that, you know, bodily functions, you know, rude words, that kind of thing. Only the slurs, and those are on the right. When we play a slur, we are declaring that our desire to score points in a word game is of more value to us than the slur's broader function as a way to oppress a group of people. I don't think this is the time for us to be contributing divisively to the world's problems. And so it continues. You know, there's some anagrams of kind of a slurs that would be removed. And it makes reference to this article in the slate. So this is the article. And it mentions bohunk as one of the words being removed. And it goes on for a long bit. You can have a look for yourself. And that was published on, you can see here, June the 18th. So that was two, two days before this, this post that you see in front of you. And the post goes on and it makes arguments both for and against. So you've got bullet points against removing the slurs. And you can pause the video if you need to see any of these more. And then uh, reasons for removing the slurs. And again, you can pause the video if you want to read through them yourself. But this is all online. On you can find it through Nesper's group, uh, Nesper um, Nesper website. And then finally, at the bottom, we see there's this survey which is posted to everybody. Anybody could you could uh, fill in this survey, and that was a survey on the issue of removing slurs. So you can see the words on the right are those that are going to be removed uh, if this goes through. And just of interest, uh, for those who are interested in how the words are added, how the words are included, it basically it's about whether the word has an acceptable uh, uh, meaning or acceptable uh, appearance, basically. And it doesn't matter how many unacceptable ones there are, as long as there's one acceptable meaning, it stays in. So that's, for instance, why you have like whiteies and whitey. Uh, so there's a different difference between the two. So whiteies would be removed, as you can see highlighted on the top right. Whiteies would be removed because that is the only the only meanings for that are slurs. But whitey is in like whitey brown or whitey the colour. Um, that that is an acceptable meaning, so that would not be removed. Only where there is no other definition besides a uh, slur. So that's a important distinction to make. So that's why you see some of the inconsistency with the list on the right. So for instance, let's say whiteys, tommed and tomming. Um, tom, toms, tommed and tomming the verb is an offensive word to mean like behave like an uncle, t uncle Tom. But there's tom and toms are acceptable because they're referring to a male animal. Uh, there's a, so that's is an important distinction. So that's why you'll see some of the kind of slightly uh, erratic inclusions. Some of them are a little bit strange, but that's the reasoning for it. So we'll move on and uh, 
So this was the follow-up just yesterday on July the 8th. And again from John Chu, the CEO of NASPA. So you see now he spent uh, a thousand, he spent the weekend over a th going through over a thousand responses to the survey. And he's been posting updates on the NASPA group, again with the bullet points of arguments both for and against. Uh, he's been paraphrasing the arguments generally and trying to make them anonymous, basically. So no names or anything like that, or identifying uh, characteristics were included. So that's why he's paraphrasing them, presumably. And again, it goes on kind of through the argument again. Uh, and this is kind of one of the key paragraphs in what he's posted. So, uh, so again, John Chu. Yes, I even love that we have racists in the game. It says so much about the power of our game and a community that even racists, not just the hardcore ones that get actively spread their toxic hatred, but the softer ones who stand by uh, rather than get involved, who say, I'm not offended, why should you? Should they be? If you can't accept words that the words have no meaning, you can't accept that the words have no meaning, you're not welcome. Or, if I'm not offended, why should you be? You can set aside their deep-seated beliefs to spend time playing a board game with people who do not share those beliefs. So this is quite contentious because it's basically saying, if you stand by rather than get involved, you're a softer racist. If you say any of these three things, like, if I'm not offended, why should you be? By offensive word on a board or slow on the board, then you're a softer racist. That's why this is what why it's so contentious. Um, so, as I say, people will make their own judgments on this. And further down, more of what's going on. So this is kind of the main thing about what's actually going to happen. So this is what it addresses. So uh, further on down the page, as has been reported in the media, during our meeting with Hasbro, I personally agreed with them that all the slurs should come out of our lexicon. So Hasbro, uh, they own Scrabble, all the trademarks and everything else in North America. Everywhere else it's owned by Mattel. So that's why there's this kind of discrepancy between the two. So this is why it won't affect the rest of the world, just Hasbro territory, so North America essentially. Um, so this is it's the English word list. It's not going to affect all the other languages as well, obviously, but it's just a North American English speaking game. So, so what he's saying there in the first couple of lines, uh, he's personally agreed with them that all slurs should come out and then follows up with, is the right thing to do and I will make sure that it happens. I have actually advisory board to vote their consciences because I think this is an important moment in the history of our association. Everybody should know how their board represented them on this weighty issue. So he's saying it's the right thing to do and I will make sure that it happens. So he's making, he's personally making sure that slurs will be removed. So I think that pretty much covers everything. It does look as though in North America we'll be seeing these changes probably in the next few months. Uh, as I say, it shouldn't affect anywhere else in the world, but just North America. So if you've got any comments or anything else, do let us know in the section below. Thanks to everybody. Cheers.